Austria. And Grat, Graz, Graz is where uh, Franz Ferdinand was born, the guy who was shot for the First World War. It's an amazing place, Graz, beautiful. And uh, he and I have this interesting conversation around sex and tea. So he was exploring why sex had become such a problem with people uh, and that it should just be like having a cup of tea. You know, basically, yeah, you want a cup of tea? Yeah, sure. And you, you, pay, you, pay, you basically have a cup of tea, you have sex, you go, thank you very much, that was nice. And that was it, you move on, you don't, you don't make it complex. And I, I believe that was what it was like in the 60s. Uh, you, in the 1960s, you, you basically, you know, you liked someone, you, had a, you, you could tell the energy and go, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, all right. And then you just, you do it and you have fun and you do it consciously and, and that's it. So why, why has it become such a problem? Uh, so he's fa- fascinated, and he also is fascinated by sexual energy as a creative process. So if you've got people in a room and there's sexual energy between some people and others, then you use that to create together. Um, and I've talked to him about, there's a, a guy called Farmer John who wrote a, he's a fantastic documentary, this guy, this farmer. And he said, as long as you've got people who fancy each other in your work domain, then you'll have a lot more sexual energy, which is very creative. Now, if you actually act on it and do something about it, often that makes a mess. But if you just enjoy the feeling of, oh, hi, I, I feel very sexually attracted to you, but I'm fine with it, and I, I'm not going to do anything about it uh, physically, then you've got that, all that energy to work with, and then you see them every day, and you just enjoy it. They know, you know. And you can use it as soon as you actually make it physical. That's when it gets complicated. So <laughs> he created this currency around: can you create a current, a sexual currency? Uh, and I called it orgasm. Was it I called it orgasma? No, he was calling it uh, ejaculathon or orgasm or whatever. I can't remember what the currency was. <laughs> but basically, the longer you 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 basically so you don't masturbate for a week. Uh, and you get points or something like that, and you, you, create that, you create that energy around no sexual contact and so on. And people ask you how much. Oh, I'm I'm on four weeks now, <laughs> and, and then you meet someone who's the same, and you like there's a lot of energy here. I really I find lo- and he's got this thing. He says like I love your lolo. He calls breast lolos. So I like your lolos, and which is quite a sweet, cute thing for an Austrian <laughs> to say to somebody. Oh, I like your lolos, and he says it. He'll say that immediately. To a woman, he goes, "Hello, what's your name?" I go, "Ah." He goes, "Ah, nice lolos. Yeah, may I see them?" <laughs> and women often go, "Fuck off, you prick!" Or, "Yeah, sure." And then that's it. So he's <laughs> he's he's like, "I just like enjoying watching very nice breasts. It's fine, you know. It's fine. What's the problem?" So he's he's like that, and he's very, yeah, he's he's an impressive guy. <laughs> He can, he, maybe he can be your uh, your greeter at the castle. No, he's uh, he's in he's uh, he's in he's in there as one of the characters. But he his job is to teach uh, the main character Silas to keep us calm because he starts he winds him up with his his partner, you know, and he says to his partner, "Oh, very nice lolos, can I touch them?" And he gets very angry. And then he goes, ah, if you're going to get upset, little boy, by me talking about that, you better calm down, otherwise you won't survive the battle. So he trains, he, he basically crosses boundaries all the time. And so he's got to learn how to, how to deal with that. Which is what, which is what uh, Wobo does in real life. He's a, a master at pushing people's buttons. Are, are you planning on bringing the night, like the portal people, together in one Zoom and having that point? Well, eventually, but I mean, I think I have to write it and prove that I've done it a lot. I mean, I, I sense that people think that it's just all happening in my mind, but it's not actually, it's really? not actually real. They don't I'm actually, you? yeah, I mean, I'm, I mean, if I show them that and they go, okay, well, you've got some post-its on the wall, it's fine. <laughs> yeah, and then, I say, and then I say, yeah, but look, you know, and then I go, look, you know, there's, there's my, my document, there's 72,042 words, you know, and they go, oh yeah, but you might write that, but then you know, I just do that, and it's all it's all there, you know. So I'm talking to Fleming tonight, 
uh, Fleming French in Toulouse. We're having a midnight conference with some wine. And uh, he's Stanley, who's the main host of the castle. Uh, but the idea is mainly at once the, the portals are finished, they have a, a big day. Uh, and I might, and it's my birthday in two weeks, so I'd like to invite, I, I might just like blind invite like a whole bunch of people to have a Zoom conference together. And uh, I mean like Fleming, John Kells, and I'm talking to him on Tuesday, who's one of the greats. Uh, Gino, yourself, you know, you know, a whole bunch of people, all the gamma of the eight, and just say, right, it's my birthday. I they get on the call, or oh, fuck off, I'll write whatever I want about you. I'll just say, yeah, he died. <laughs> he died He died very quickly from his ignorance, you know. He was very killed within well. seconds, you know. <laughs> well, hey, if, 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 any, if anyone is doubting you, you can just use your phone, point to my post-it, and go, this post-it, <laughs> represents freaking 25 years of freaking work right like i mean to me i already know it's what was be... what's the post that called well i mean you could call it the the inflow matrix or the portal to the planetary guardians or you know to me the um i already see it's like the best game on my planet i mean everything you told me is just sheer genius and i mean nothing's gonna stop it it's gonna happen and i i'm to me, it's, it's 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 the most interesting thing that I'm dealing with right now. And I'll put I'll put you up. I'll put you up. Own work. I'll put you up there. <laughs> Inflammatrix. I'll get I'll get the I'll get the sticky tape because it blows off. Hang on. And and you, you can tell them there's another madman who basically believes that we're going to transform the whole world's economic system from one of fear to love. Like that's. Yeah. So it is there. Yeah. Well, you, you could go Captain Sweep and the very secret plan because. Well, hang on. Hang on. That's another one. <laughs> <clears throat> Where's my pen going? It's over here. You know, because it to me it's 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 like madmen and women such as ourselves that that change the species direction, right? I mean, it's better the game design to have the most leverage. And um, did I tell you about this game that I'm playing right now? Which one? It's called Star Trek Fleet Command. Okay. Can I show you something here? Uh huh. Take a look at that. Wow. So okay. With this tricorder or tablet, like I have an alliance of 70 people. And around the same time that we had our chat, I think a little bit after, I. I told them that I've been working on this way to map information systems. I've been mapping the game and I have this little room now called Captain Sweep's map room within their discord. And there's like, I don't know, like we're server 36. There's probably hundreds of thousands of people playing this game. And basically you have a base and you're, you're creating ships and you go around mining and, and having battles with other ships and you're in an alliance and it's, it's, it's a very sophisticated game, and it's the first time for me to really get into an online game. And I'm I'm playing yeah. hours every day, and I love it. It ch it changed my my perspective on life because it brought some fun back in. I I got pretty sort of bored with a lot of things, and and this has has brought me out. And what I see in terms of you and this game, I mean, to me, the spiritual path, you know, we're here to spiritually <clears throat> progress. And we're dealing with a bunch of nutballs, and the, and we're going through a consciousness shift to get out of this. And to me, the only way out is going to be like in a game such as what you're creating, where it's fun, a lot of humans participate, and all of a sudden, boom! You know, they're they're waking up. They're like, there's your you're bringing so much, I don't know, like beauty, humor, awareness into one methodology and you're bringing together all these game designers from around the world you you spent your entire life collecting these people right just like yeah. I, I i've spent 20 30 years hanging out with spiritual visionaries in, in western canada and those are the only people i can hang with they're the only people that all i want to talk about is consciousness and god realization or whatever you know that entails and people who are very interested in that are very interested in that like that's their number one thing yeah. And we 
in my opinion, you know, <laughs> we need to do something about what's occurring on the planet, right? I mean, you're not looking at species level <laughs> problems and thinking we got to deal with this, you know, fuck our species might get erased. I don't know. But it's, it's only, as you say, if things get worse and worse, that people will pay more and more attention just because the brainwashing yeah. is, is, is wearing off. And it, it, will get, it, will get, it will get worse until people just realize that they can't trust anything that, that's coming at them from the media. And they'll wake up and they'll start looking at each other and their neighbors going, what do we do? And then someone, someone will say, have you seen this? Because it's not just ideas and stuff. It's like actual practical stuff. Mm. Um, and then it, it, it will have its own, have its own effect. Yeah. Well, if you take into account, you know, virtual reality, you know, the, the opportunity right now for <laughs> game design, for educational curriculum, for uh, bringing together, you know, again, the new parent, it's there. Like I've been waiting for the technology. I don't know about you, but I've just been waiting to create you, coming through. Yeah. Do you have WhatsApp? I don't use it. I is that something I should be using right now? Because you have WhatsApp. I'll add you to the gamma of whales, which is over there, and that's um, so. In that group is Robbie Stamp, who's Douglas Adams's good friend. Uh, I've got a guy who's been asked to be the president of the VR Association worldwide. I've got one of the top guys in Scotland, the Glasgow guy who works for Google VR. And I've got uh, a guy who's a complexity philosopher. And yeah, the, and Dave Smith, you know Tex in New Zealand? He's one of the visionaries for AI for years. He's in New Zealand. So if you've got WhatsApp and send me that, I'll add you to that group. Okay. So what's it? Okay. So we'll and they're the gamma whales. So the idea was to, and this all came about, there was a, a video of, an AR whale going over a city. I think it was Greenpeace that did it, or one of those groups, and it said, stop killing us. And Tex saw that and said, well, what I see is, is that basically the whale goes around the world and takes all the stories of the indigenous peoples. And you can access the whale and, and add your own stories to it or hear the stories of the indigenous peoples all around the world. This whale goes all over around the cities of the world, like the whale is the memory of the civilization. And I talked today to a guy who's trying to do, what is it? He's a Scottish Lord of all things, lives in Wiltshire, beautiful place. And he's doing, where is it? He's, he's doing, uh, it's called Mirthquake, which is uh, seeking cetaceous insight. So he's all about, you know, recognizes cessations embody the oldest form of consciousness on earth, symbolizing the myth and stories from around the world of people ancient and modern. So I talked to him today and yeah, I'll send you that link. So it's mustquake.org. And I'm, I'm talking to him now and he's connected to the indigenous of North America and all the Ojibwa and the Shinabe people. And they're gathering now and, and they, they're looking to connect with people. So I can put you in touch with a guy called Bear Walker who's in Connecticut right now. Okay. And he's doing a lot of medicine all over the states. And they're connected to the, the people of Red Lake, which is in Wisconsin, which was the only Anishinaabe, the only original people that were not that did not sign the treaties. Uh, so of all the natives that they're the only ones that didn't sign. And they're in Wisconsin and they still exist and they've got lawyers doing their thing. So uh, that's in Red Lake. Uh, Wisconsin, and that was the original Turtle Island. That that little island above Wisconsin is in the Great Lakes. Is that's the that's a Turtle Island, and the Anishinaabe were told to go there. And the seven fire prophecy was that the new beings will arrive, and basically the, the they had seven prophets, which were the seven fires, and then basically the the the, the new people arrive, and they have they are given the task of choosing between the technological road, the you know the charred earth, the electricity and fire and burnt earth, or do you go back to the old ways and, and uh, live by that way and forget that, that stuff? And if they choose the right way, then it's the eighth fire is lit and that becomes the fire for all mankind, brotherhood, sisterhood, and everything else. Oh. That's the seventh fire prophecy and Bear Walker believes that this is the time that's happening now. 
and uh, and the, 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 the tribes are all gathering and you just have to sort of find a way to relay and connect and and talk because the FBI are terrified that the natives uh, reconnect because if they do that's half a million strong very powerful spiritual people and that's it that's game over for them so they do their best to to stop that and every powwow the fbi are present and i was at an F, i was at a powwow in 2004 and the fbi were in a van at the, end, at the edge of the, the campus and and the natives did a creep up on them you know like creeping up and going hello we know you're here um <laughs> and they can't do anything about it so. huh well i you know british columbia also in canada is the one province that didn't sign treaties and all the other as they came across canada they were signing treaties but by the time they came to bc they didn't and their the, the last i guess major agreement was the that's the first took over from the french and they were in a very you know delicate situation i mean they they, they did not have the power um so they needed the agreement of the first nations people so that the local population is basically, hey, we're allies, we're your friend. But since then and after, right, the Hudson Bay Company came in and basically just did what they did. And now in uh, there was some landmark case in 1993 where the First Nations uh, actually began to have their title record to the court because, you know, with the logging and the mining and all the other things going on, they rarely get percentages of the money. But now in court they can win they win like they have to so this is you know in in british columbia i don't know if you know anything about it, but they create this huge damming electrical system bc hydro that is like the jewel of north america i mean it's free power and it's clean power and after enron there was this huge scam and the accounting company for Enron became the accounting company for BC Hydro. And in, in, in my in the last 20 years, I've watched again those scammers come in and take control of this, you know, debt-free, incredible, you know, power source. And now supposedly it's in debt, and you know, it, it's producing free power. How could it be in debt? <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> you know, they're so good at their scamming they call these things independent power plants and they brought them in and they you know it was i watched this one presentation where the guy gave the the basic economic breakdown and it was it's just thievery thievery. and anyway i'm sure that's happening all across the world right but in british columbia there's a there's a kind of a uniqueness probably like wisconsin that they 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 have the ability to be very powerful but again, you know, they're always fucked. Yeah. So. This is water from the source of the island, so. Yeah. All free filtered. What, is there any help I can do for you? Like, I mean, is there any? No, I think uh, when I when I get to that point where I, I bring you into the story, then if you can read it. And then uh, I'll write what I can. And then if you say, well, if you just add these bits, and then I can add a when the, it becomes the game, and it can be a portal, you know, linked to plant gardens, and you can go, they can go off into something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, I mean, it's ever since our last chat, you know, it's it's it's. Uh, I feel as if you know that there's been we're all building something. And each of us have pieces of the puzzle, and I've been waiting for yeah. people who have, you know, are operating at the same level, and and how to integrate and connect and, and support one another. I think in, in what we're doing, and so. Well, know, if you can send me your WhatsApp, then I'll put you in touch with Bear Walker and these other Gamma Whales, and then I'm in, I'm interested in uh, is Gabriel Silverfire still in the in the what's he doing? <laughs> I I broke contact with him a couple of years ago, I think, and. I mean, I've broken contact with everybody at some point if I feel we're not moving towards where we need to be going. So, I mean, he's around. Um, he's a, a beautiful man and uh, holds his own keys. So, you know, at same some, with Tammy. Is it same with Tammy? Same with Tammy. Yeah, but I, I'm not in contact with her. So, I mean, there, there's 
she's got the, the alphabet code. She's got a beautiful way of, of changing the alphabet into a methodology to create words that induce Christ consciousness. I mean, she, like she has a different, I don't know if you know this, but she has a different meaning for each letter. And so when you look at your name. Oh, yeah. She did the same with me. Yeah. Okay. She did that for you. Like that's, she's been sitting on that again for 20 years. I mean, she, she, she's at some point, you know, going to have a huge following and many people wanting to learn. But again, like what I've seen in Western Canada with a lot of these originators, that you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to integrate whatever has been your spiritual experience with reality. And, yeah. and you, you know, there's this, well, she's in touch with the, Harry Van Der Velde now, and there. I'll talk to Fleming about it tonight because Fleming is uh, Fleming's in touch with because Fleming doesn't upset anybody. <laughs> He's one of these people. Fleming in Toulouse never upsets anybody. He's one of these people that never upset anybody. It, yeah, no matter what you come at him with, I can throw everything at him and he was go. Yeah, well, <laughs> can you stop writing drunk messages on my my on my wall, please, Graham? I was like, yeah, sure. Uh, and you know, he's great. So he he's adored by. He's got a huge following. So I can say, what's happening with Tammy? What's happening with you know these guys and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, yeah, cool. All right. So I'm going to go and get some ask, wine. To ask you um, in terms of, you know, what, what I see, like I'm, there's about five or six people I'm having a one hour chat with a week like this and filming it. And to me, this is part of the very secret plan. Yeah. And I'm just wondering about that other video that has a lot more details about the game. I was going to yeah, say. Yeah, I just, I wouldn't put the, I wouldn't put that, just keep that to yourself. And then this is fine because we're just talking about it generally. And, you know, that, that's fine. Can um, I, can I, I, I did want to send it to one game designer that I know that I'd like to. Yeah, just send the, if you just send goldenspider.co, that's the, because that's the website. And uh, I'll just, I'll put it in the, the link here. I'll put it in. Um, okay, so you, you don't want me to share that video with anybody then? Yeah, just keep it to yourself just now. That that's for the future. Okay. I'm gonna say yeah, it, ha it started there. So I've sent you the link. That's fine. And if people want access to the story of the friend, then they have to work out the password. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so we're coming to the end. Yep, I've got to go off and get some wine for Fleming. <laughs> While whilst I read about Sigma Draconis, which is the ancient, uh, it's a star constellation, eighteen point eight light years from the sun, and the constellation of Draco didn't know it existed, but there we go, it does. And apparently. Sigma Draconis is the, in the Chinese, is the second star of the celestial kitchen. <laughs> Real. Oh, I'll send you the... the, how, the how, should I, <laughs> how should I proceed with Gino? <laughs> I guess just... Uh, <laughs> Gino is... Just, in, just go... He's, in, he's just in, really intuitive. So if you just... And he is... So you're 10 hours behind me and he's, he's 15 hours ahead of you. So if you get him maybe towards your evening and say, hey, do you know, you got time? And then he'll just jump on a call. Okay. Okay. Well, great chatting with you. And uh, I'll load this up and send to you. Because um... he's doing a lot of things at once. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. See you, William. I think we're frozen again. Bye, William.